Well, hello out there, Calvary family, and welcome back to another episode of The Rice Cast. My name is Anthony Russo. I am in just a beautiful Clearwater, Florida, sitting across the table from the doctor, the pastor, Willie Rice. Pastor Willie, how are you today? Doing great. Doing great. It is hot outside. It's hot outside, but these are some beautiful evenings. I don't beautiful know if you're evenings. an evening walker, but I, I haven't we been do out that. lately. Uh, so it's you feel maybe a little. You can feel a little bit of summer, like September, trying to come. It's wanting to come okay. through a little bit. <laughs> some beautiful evenings here. I've really enjoyed it. But the, I mean, maybe it, what it is is not so much the weather, but just my full spirit that we are just a couple of weeks away from football we are very close we are very close and uh, you can feel it our calvary team has already started they had their preseason game and their first home game will be this week as we record this broadcast so it's friday night whatever is this a real game on yes friday? no this is a real game wow they tackle and everything wow <laughs> well, we hope so. We hope yeah. they tackle. No, I got. We got. We think we're excited about the year. We think we have a good team. And uh, yeah. I saw the newspaper had a little write up, put us in the top ten in the county, kind of okay. thing. Okay. So um, excited. Got got a good quarterback. Good little running back. Got yeah. You know. Um, so anyway, come out Friday night to the the field here, the Rock, the Rock, and uh, ha- enjoy some high school football. It'd be a great atmosphere. I love it. You're going to get in there and rile them up before you think. Uh, you know, I, Tom Cooney does the chaplain. You know, I'd, I, for a couple of years, I'd go in there and talk to him before the game. Uh, but uh, uh, you know, I think they've they've moved on to bigger and better things. Maybe you know, it, listen, it's, my record wasn't good enough. So I, <laughs> if the Bucks are any indication. Uh, may I remind no. the listeners? <laughs> Two and zero. I'm undefeated. Two and zero <laughs> as Bucks Chaplin. A perfect season is within reach. <laughs> it's about five miles down the road from Raymond James Stadium. There you go. So um, anyway, uh, but uh, it, we're excited about football season. Yeah, it's just for the sports fans out there, and I know it's that so many of them. It's why they come to the podcast for the sports <laughs> takes. This is a bleak part of the sports year. It's regular season baseball, which yeah. I'm sure we got some baseball people. It's fine. There's 947 <laughs> games. Everybody loves that. <laughs> but football just means fall. Yeah. It means better Yeah, good to me, weather. this time of year, it's like football is like getting on this incredible roller coaster. You know there are going to be dips and turns, yeah. And um, unless you cheer for Alabama and you know you're going to win every game, the, the rest of us have ups and downs. <laughs> and uh, you just, you just, you're just a white knuckle. It, yeah. And it's over before it starts. It's oh, like this yeah. is the. It just boom. It's gone. Right. It's gone. Yeah. You might as well start going to Christmas shopping this week because <laughs> boom. So uh, it's just that fast. But we're those of us who are football fans are ready to go. We're excited. Lots of other reasons to be excited. Love to update you on, uh, you know, what we got going on around around Calvary with Wednesday nights kick off this last Wednesday. Super fun. Lot you know, of the last couple of weeks have just been, we, you know, we're always promoting, excited about something. But, boy, it just seems like the energy in, in the building has just been off the charts. We had huge crowds last Wednesday night mm-hmm. across our student ministry, all three campuses. I heard incredible reports. It's just exciting to see uh, so many new people coming, and um, it's it's a lot of fun. So, uh, yeah, if you, you're not involved in the group, Wednesday night's a great opportunity to come, find a group. I do a kind of catch-all expository Bible study. So if you're not in anyone else's group and you want yeah. to be in a group, come. And uh, a lot of things for children, students, and so forth. So Students uh, are crazy on Wednesday. Oh, man. Tons uh, of kids out yeah, there. Yeah. Exciting time. And then we have, uh, we're getting into September here in a couple of weeks. We've got Beach Baptism coming up September 11th, September as well 11th, as yep. the launch, the crystal, the official launch. I should, it's hard launch. to not say. They're really going. They're going pretty quick uh, already. But, but, you know, I mean, they're going. Uh, Pastor Tim's out there yeah. preaching. Uh, and, uh, but September 11th is the official launch. Mm-hmm. We think it's going to be a great day. Going to be fun. Uh, as always, you can keep up with everything we have going on at Calvary at calvary.us. You can follow us on social media, all kinds of great things going on. I want to talk today, a little follow-up. With, this week was the second week of our Reset series. Uh, so we'll, uh, as usual, we'll put that uh, sermon in the show notes if you missed it. It was the second week. Um, so you can catch up on the first week as well if you missed that. Um but it was a great – there's so many things, a couple of things I wanted to dive in on, uh, ask a little bit more, maybe lean a little bit more in on from the sermon, if that's okay yeah, with you, Pastor, absolutely. for today. So uh, one, of the, one of the points that you made, you were talking – we're going through Acts 2, 
Uh, and you, there was a, a line in there about the early church being devoted to the apostles' teaching. Yep. Um, and you had a point there about – it was just so interesting, and I thought it, oh, it, it fired so many questions for me, so many thoughts. Um, this was your quote. I'll just read your quote. Uh, it's about like you know individualism. It's okay to think for yourself. This is just what he said. It's okay to think for yourself, but you don't have to think by yourself. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I thought it was such a good quote because you do when you're reading the Bible, when you're studying the Bible, you realize you're taking part in this thousands of years mm-hmm. of of thought, of teaching, of mm-hmm. of deciphering and understanding. So I guess that's my question, especially even maybe more so for you than for someone like me. But when you're approaching a text. Where is there space for original thought or original, you know, you say it's okay to think for yourself, right? We're all bringing our own kind of skills and um, abilities and perspectives and histories to a text. So how do you balance what you're bringing, your, kind of your original look at the text with the history of the mm-hmm. text, what's been said about the text, uh, what's been taught about the text? Where's the? Where, how do you toe the line in there? Well, I think it's an important uh, uh, tension to talk about, um, you know, and, and I do like that line. You know, we think for ourselves and because we hear that all the time. Think mm-hmm. for yourself. Think, think for, for yourself. yourself. Right. But we shouldn't think by ourselves. We should not think in isolation because the reality is we're part of a grand narrative, a big story uh, that has started before you ever got here. It'll keep going when we're done. Mm-hmm. And in reality, it's the eternal story. It's God's truth. And we're we're, we're not the center of the show. You know, mm-hmm. and so there's such a uh, – this is kind of uh, underscoring um, all this is this idea of expressive individualism, which while we may or may not understand it, is kind of the crisis of West, the mm-hmm. Western civilization. So it's not just a small thing. This is a big thing. Uh, Carl Truman recently is, has written a couple books. Um, the Rise and Triumph of the Modern Self is is like the, the academic one. Brave New World is a little smaller, a little easier to read. But he outlines how the last two, three hundred years in the West have created this expressive individualism. Thinkers like Freud, thinkers like uh, Darwin and others. Gotcha. And it has created a stream, and we don't really get it. We're like fish in the water. We don't understand. Mm-hmm. But but it, it once you see it, you can't unsee it. And it explains why we're dealing with... So many of the issues we're dealing with right now, including what, you know, the transgender craze, uh, is that we have defined, that's where the title of the book comes, the rise and triumph of the modern self. The idea of, uh, who we are is now ha- that I, I think, therefore that's what I am. Mm. Uh, I, you know, my thoughts, my feelings, my insights define reality. That is a fundamental shift from, the historic way people have understood themselves and truth. And it is certainly a historic shift from what, as Christians, we ought to be seeking. The reality is we don't need original thoughts. We want eternal thoughts. Mm. Uh, we want God's thoughts. We want God's truth. I don't know that there is an original thought when it comes to the Bible. Uh, when uh, you talk about uh, that, I, I think of a quote Vance Havner said when he talked about uh, preachers saying something original. And he said, um, he's an old North Carolina preacher, and Havner said, I heard of a preacher who said he was going to be original or nothing, and he was both. <laughs> and and uh, it's a line like, you know, what that saying is, original can be overrated. Mm. Um, now, I get it. I get it when you talk about we want to be creative. Yeah. We want to think for ourselves. In other words, don't just take somebody's word. Think. You know, use your brain. And, yeah. And I fully understand that when you are studying anything, and especially the Bible, and wrestling with biblical truth, that thinking, uh, you know, when you think about something, you wrestle with the truth, that there are going to be moments where you have breakthroughs of insight and understanding, Mm -hmm. and you're going to feel like nobody ever saw this before. But what you're really saying is, I never saw this before. Yeah. Like, this is fresh. This is new to me. Right. But But take a deep breath. Glad you're excited. Yeah. Like you come, I saw something I've never, that's completely original. I'm going to say, okay, wonderful. Number two, take a deep breath and relax. Tell me what you saw, but know this. It is an original. Mm. Okay. I promise you. I'm not trying to be insulting. Not trying to, not trying to pull the air out of your balloon. <laughs> but I promise you, people have thought about this before. They've wrestled with this text the way you are wrestling with it before. Why? Because 
uh, some people don't understand the wealth of Christian scholarship. In 2,000 years of of the most brilliant men and women who have ever lived reading and writing about the Bible, there is no book that's been as scrutinized and examined as Mm -hmm. the Bible. So uh, it may be fresh to you, new to you, original to you, but it's not original. And, and that's good. It's not original you want. It's eternal that you want. Mm. So uh, that's what we mean by think for yourself. That mm-hmm. is, wrestle with it. Ask your questions. Re- interact with the text. But don't think by yourself. Yeah. What do other pastors, what do other commentators say? It's not that they're supplanting the authority of the Bible. No, the Bible is the authority. But plenty of reputable, uh, scholarly Christian people have leaned into this before, yeah. and it, you should at least pay attention to what those who have come before you and around you have said. Again, not saying that a human being is the authority. Yeah. I'm just saying there are plenty of people who have spoken about a text. So w- what people, you know, if uh, teachers would understand this intuitively, but those of you maybe that aren't teachers, um, you know, when, when we get ready, say, to preach a sermon, mm-hmm. one of the fir- first, we go to the text to try to understand it, mm-hmm. read it, read it, read it, make sure we know it. We look at everything we need to look at. Uh, but then one of the things we do in the study process, and I suppose every pastor does this at some point, is uh, we have a library, like lawyers have a law library. I have a library. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and of course, with the internet, now we all have access to huge libraries, but you you begin to look at resources. You mm-hmm. begin to study what other people have said about this. You begin to read what has been said before. Yeah. What have other preachers said? What do commentators say? I have a couple go tos that you go to and uh and study and 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 you're trying to get a composite picture of the text. Yeah. So that's what I would say. Uh where does original thought fit in? Uh, probably is not the best word. I would say it is original to you, fresh to you. Mm -hmm. But what we're looking for is the eternal truth of God's word there. Mm. Yeah, it's so good. And there's such a strength in that. Um, You know, as you were saying that, I was thinking it's kind of a different take on the word community, which we've used a couple times and used in this sermon as well. But it's that larger community. You're a part of this large community of people who have studied the word of God. And I love even what you said about lawyers. You know, another one came to mind as you were saying that, you know, doctors. No doctor approaches something and just starts from scratch on this. uh, Well, not often anyway. Are you starting from scratch on it? Honestly, think about it. If you had a doctor walk in and go, I have an original thought about what to do, (laughs) you'd go, whoa, 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 whoa. (laughs) Easy does it there, Doc. <laughs> Pump the uh, <laughs> I'm pretty sure people have had the flu before. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I have an original thought. Mm, well, well, why don't you tell me what other people have done? Maybe the tested thought <laughs> would be, what have we got with that one this time? Yeah. Now, in medicine, you can have original thoughts sure. because you can have new discoveries. Uh-huh. Um, but, you, you know, those are going to be tested. Mm-hmm. They're going to be tested by numerous people. Right. Like if it, if it, if somebody comes up with a new uh, way of treating heart disease, yeah, yeah, it is going to be studied. It is going to be peer reviewed um, I- extensively, mm-hmm. um, and they're going to test it out. They, they, you know, so the new idea. Yeah, we want new ideas. That's how we grow and say medicine. But it, it isn't just some guy walking in, you know, mm-hmm. on Monday morning going, you know. Why do, what if we cut here? I think it might work. <laughs> no, 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 no. no. I, yeah. Have you tried this before? No, I just had a thought last. Yeah. No, well, let's let's test it out a little yeah. bit. Yeah. And uh, and uh, you know, a, you hire a good lawyer, uh, and they have a unique case. I was uh, there was a question that came up recently with just an interesting thing the church was involved in. Nothing big or controversial, just kind of a land thing. Mm-hmm. And uh, we went to our lawyer and said, "What about that?" And he goes, "That's very interesting." Well, what lawyers do is they go to their books, they go to the internet, yeah, they research case study, right, to look for it. Yeah, lawyers could have original ideas, but probably you want a lawyer who's well familiar with all the arguments that have been presented yeah. in similar cases in the past. Yeah, I would say it's even more true when it comes to Bible study and theology, mm. um, because God has spoken, we have His truth. And um, it's not something new we need. It's something eternal that we need. Mm -hmm. So we don't do this in isolation. We study in community for Mm -hmm. that reason. Yeah, and and it's – aren't you so thankful that you get the benefit of all of that great – you know? I mean, again, we keep using these other parallels, but aren't you grateful to live in a a time where medical study has been going on as long as it has, where you'll get – 
the flu, and they've been treating the flu for an awful long time. So uh, I think how many of us even, too, might see that as, you know, you're in a parenting situation, you're in a marital situation, you feel like you got to solve it, like you got to figure this out, just the two of you. Uh, and certainly you want to be selective with who you go to for help. Yes. Um, but tackling problems within community. It's huge. It's so important. And when you go back, a lot of sociologists and writers are even examining this. In the past, and it may be, by the way, one of the reasons we have such mental health and relational crises right now. Because you can go back to another era and families live together. Extended families were connected. Right, right, right. So if a young woman, for instance, was raising her children, well, you know, there were grandmothers and aunts and older sisters nearby. You know, yeah. there was a community built in, a familial community, and and and, and a wealth of wisdom to draw from. Mm. Um, your child is colicky. Mm. It's been dealt with before. Right. My child is stubborn. It has happened before. Right. Yours is not the first stubborn child. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm having trouble understanding my husband. Yeah. Do you think that you are the first woman? Who has had trouble understanding her husband? Mm-hmm. I'm having trouble understanding my wife. Well, you and That's almost every other every, male every who has ever lived. Yeah. So when you are in a community, you're right. You don't go you, – you're selective who you go to. But when you're in a community, there's wealth about each of those situations that drips onto you, mm-hmm. that, that seeps into your life that you're not even aware of. Mm-hmm. You don't even know you're learning, but you are learning. Now, we are gathering that, but when we are in isolation, we aren't learning those things. Yeah. So, again, all the more reason why you lean into community, you are learning when you don't even know you're learning. Yeah. Yeah, and there's so much there, and you talked a lot this weekend. I actually pulled a quote. I, I guess I'll say this because I pulled this quote. Uh, it was from Larry Larry Crabb. Larry mm-hmm. Crabb was the, was the author or who or said the quote. Damaged psyches uh, aren't the problem. The problem beneath our struggles is a disconnected soul. Uh, and you talked a lot about um, how pivotal, uh, critical being connected yep. f- to the Christian faith is, to, to be a follower of Jesus, to follow the commands of Jesus. This is the way you painted it, which mm-hmm. was so great. Uh, to, if you're going to take these commands seriously and do them, they, they, they are impossible. We're not using hyperbole here. They are impossible – to do alone because they involve how you interact with other people. Yep. And it struck me when you were saying that, and you thought it was interesting because there's, you know, there's different faiths that practice different things. And, and several of them, uh, it's more about isolation. It's more mm-hmm. about separate, disconnect, yep. seek enlightenment, maybe is a, right. is a thing. And then there's this, our, 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 the teachings of Jesus are together, community, yep. leaning yep. in, like, uh, instead of, instead of separating, uh, entirely disconnected. Mm-hmm. It's leaning in and mm-hmm. finding uh, strength there. I thought that was so good. Well, it, it is, and the Crab conversation was fascinating. Dr. Larry Crab has written more than 25 books. I came across this piece of research last week uh, in some research that we had, and um, it, it it was amazing to me because he's written all these books on mental health and mental health expert, psychologists. Uh, I believe it's a trained psychologist, not psychiatrist, psych- but but psychologist, counselor. So he's mm-hmm. considered an expert in the field from a Christian evangelical perspective. A lot of people would know the name Dr. Larry Crabb. But what I didn't know is that he had shifted his focus toward mm-hmm. the end of his his, um, his work. And uh, to understand that underneath a lot of what people diagnose as illness uh, psychologically is this lack of healthy community, mm. and uh, which is really part of Christian discipleship. And again, we said it Sunday. I want to be clear. We're not saying there's not real mental health issues. Of course. Uh, we're not saying there's not a need for counseling. We have a counseling center that we partner with here, Baylight Counseling. Grateful for their work. They do biblical counseling, uh, and we recommend others. We understand that there sometimes is a need. You're stuck. You're confused. You need mm-hmm. counseling. You need to sit down with others. And what I love about biblical counseling is the grounding is – we take you to the Bible and talk mm-hmm. about it. But the reality is, what Crabb was saying is, the reason there is such a mental health crisis in America is because we're disconnected. Mm-hmm. Uh, we are in isolation. And this expressive individualism, this push to identify yourself. Think of everything. How, how Once you see it again, you can't unsee it. Think about how much people are being pushed. And, and again, the current transgender craze is a big part of this. To figure out who you are. Mm-hmm. Even children are being told, you got to figure out who you are. Mm-hmm. I'm just telling you, that is nonsense. Um, 
you know, it is far healthier to have healthy people around you helping you know who you are. Mm. This is who you are. Mm-hmm. This is what this means. And um, uh, I think you are far more likely to have a healthy psyche and to be a healthy person when you have a sense of community around you helping you discover who you are. It is utter madness, not to get on a rabbit trail, Mm -hmm. but it is utter madness to be talking to children about gender as if they can pick it. Mm. Like, that is utter madness. And it's it borders on child abuse. And those are harsh words. But I'm not even sure it borders on, I think it is at a time, child abuse. To say to a child who is confused, you know, I always joke, I heard it from my, I mean, my kid, my daughter thought she was a mermaid when she was five. Uh, you know, but you still make her get out of the bathtub. Mm. Um, okay, you're a mermaid. I'm staying in the bathtub. No, you're getting out of the bathtub. Not, we're not arguing about right, it. Right, I'm right. not even trying to convince you you're not a mermaid. I'm just telling you, you're getting out of the bathtub yeah. and you're going to bed. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, two weeks later, you know, no more mermaid. And I'm not suggesting everything is that easy. Sure. I'm not. Sure, I understand sure. these are there can be significant issues, but I'm telling you some of them would be that easy hmm. as just saying, no, no, let me help you understand what it means to be uh, a beautiful uh, girl, a girl created in the image of God. Hmm. Let me help you understand what it means to be a male created in the image of God, beautiful boy. What does that mean? Mm-hmm. Well, I feel different. That's okay. That doesn't negate that. That's that's part of who you are. Let's let me help you see who you are by showing you God's design, and the community helps this person understand who they are. And and so I know people would accuse me of being overly simplistic there, but this idea of expressive individualism actually is deeply and profoundly destructive. And the idea of healthy communities is profoundly, profoundly healing and helpful. Yeah, you know, and I. I Two things on that. One, I just thought this was interesting. I don't know if you saw this, but Baylight Counseling, who we do have here, actually shared that clip that I you, saw that. from the thing, yeah. and, which I thought was so cool, just to reinforce that, like, this this is so healthy. This is so necessary. Because that's their philosophy. That it's an, you know, they see it, you know, Joshua and Christy, which, or who are Joshua Walker and Christy Walker, are the kind of counselors there. Mm-hmm. And we've been partnering with a number of years now, would see them as themselves as extensions of discipleship. Mm. And they, I think, would tell you that if we were doing a better job of discipling everybody, they probably wouldn't be needed as much. Mm. Uh, the reality is there are needs because yeah. people do need counseling. And there's, by the way, there's nothing wrong if you need to go see them. That's I've right. sent many people and said, hey, sit down with Josh Christie. But the idea is underneath that is this crying need for community, biblical community, and biblical mm-hmm. discipleship. Yeah, and another, you know, just a, a real practical case of that. You know, you talked some about, we were talking about parenting a minute ago, and you said someone has a colicky baby. Maybe you don't know what that's like if you haven't lived through that. Uh, we've had some friends that have dealt with it d- at different periods. And if you're alone in that, and you and it's just you think a, the world's falling apart. You'll never make it. You think you will never make it right. out of this baby won't stop crying. Yep. I'm the only one that's ever dealt with this, yep. and I will, I will and, not make it. And I'm something is wrong with me. Yes, I'm right. a bad parent. Right, we've done something wrong. Mm-hmm. And then somebody comes along and says, "Oh, honey," you know, a, a, a wonderful grandmother says, "Oh, sweetie, I've been there. Mm-hmm. It's terrible. I'm not minimizing it. Right. God bless you. And by the way, even better. Hey, maybe when you're in community, maybe we can help. You know, mm-hmm. maybe you need a nap. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We'll watch them for a little while so you can get uh, an hour nap, you know, yeah, to help yeah. you. Because it's not going to last that long. Mm-hmm. You're going to get through it. We got through it. They tell you a story. And then that young mother goes home. Okay, I can do it. Right. That's the idea of community. It's a simple example. Yeah. But what if we had that, you know, and I think we do in some ways, but we all want more of it. That kind of community is what will disciple people, will help people grow. And, and to me, at the at its best, that's what the church should be. Mm. Yeah, because you think about in the mo like everything you just ex- explained it on, uh, that mom thinks she's a bad mom. Like that's how she would identify herself. I'm obviously not good at being a parent because my kid keeps crying. Right. But if you if you surround yourself with a community that has a, that has a vantage points you don't have, they're able to actually better identify you yep. in your own situation. They're able to say, "No, you're doing a great job." Like, exactly. You're doing exactly what you, what you think you be. are is wrong. Right. But they're going to help you see what you are. Mm-hmm. And again, you give a hundred examples. A husband whose wife is depressed. I'm a terrible husband. Yeah. Sure. No, not necessarily. Mm-hmm. Uh, and somebody comes along and says, "Been there." A wife who is 
you know, struggling in her marriage and like, has anyone ever thought about quitting? Mm-hmm. Again, think about a godly woman coming along to say, no, I've been there. Mm-hmm. I know exactly what you're going through. Here's what we did. So that's the, that's community. Mm-hmm. And when you have that, boy, it just, it, 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 uh, it lightens the load. And you're right. The, the idea of it better helps you understand who you are so you don't believe the lies of the enemy. Because I think the lie of the enemy is you aren't who God wants you to be. You mm-hmm. aren't who God says you are. And uh, even to a child, you're you're a terrible person. That idea of shame. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, you're, you're, you know, you're not a girl if you think this way. Mm-hmm. Uh, you're not a good wife if this happens to you. Mm-hmm. You're not a good husband if you, this happens. And when people come along and say, that's a lie, it helps you reject the lies and embrace the truth mm-hmm. and trust the Lord. And and it's a this was another point from the message. Uh, it, it's a the community. It's a daily thing. This is something you surround yeah. yourself in all the time. You know, sometimes people uh, minimize you know church connection or these these meaningful relationships with with uh, believers down to Sunday uh, yep. or it, this one hour on a Sunday. And what was so beautiful about the picture that we were looking at from Acts two is this is an everyday kind of thing. And yes, Acts 2 was an unusual period of uh, when they were in Jerusalem together. And so some people would tend to say, well, that is just, you know, that's an unusual period. Um, Yes and no. It's an unusual period, yes. It's probably showing you some historic patterns that are unlikely to be repeated on a extended time. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe the thing most compatible to that is when people go on retreats or something, you know, um, and uh, yeah, yeah. And uh, you spend a couple of days where you're just immersed, you know, with people and and around spiritual things. But um, but there's a principle there that doesn't need to be negated, which is this idea that the Christian life and pursuing Christ in community is not something I just check in on once a week. It Mm -hmm. does need to be a part of my life and my lifestyle. And I think we've kind of dumbed that down in the American church to try to say, well, we can do it in one or two easy steps. Well, you can do some things, but Mm -hmm. I think we need to maybe call people to a more robust understanding of, look, if you want to follow Jesus, it's all in, and it's going to be all-consuming. And, um, and, and, you know, community is going to be something that isn't just Sunday morning. It's all the time. Mm. Yeah. And it's, uh, you mentioned it Sunday, but it definitely bears repeating, uh, you know, and I, I, listen, I'm the communications guy here. So I know we say things uh, sometimes you're like, I feel like I've heard that before, but really August is like the time to get into a group. Perfect time, you know, August and January are like the, the two times because right at the first of the right. year, people are new and, you know, yeah. but August is, is one of those rhythms of the year. We don't set the rhythms. We just, you know, I don't oh, make no. the waves. I just ride them. Yeah, that's right. And, uh, you know, when school starts back at the end of summer, this is that season. Mm-hmm. And so we have just seen a flood of people in the last two to three weeks coming and getting connected mm-hmm. and uh, new people in groups, new groups starting, and we need more. We want more. So. So let's keep it going. And if you're listening and you haven't been connected in a while, because I still run into, I know it's hard to believe at this point, I mm-hmm. still run into people who got out of the habit during the COVID era yeah. and uh, haven't got back in. And, you know, I'm just telling you, I love you. And, and you know, but unless there is a just extraordinary circumstance that, that you wouldn't be out connecting with real people, you're going to be much healthier when you connect with real, real people, um, uh, and not just occasionally, but regularly. Mm-hmm. I, 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 Justin, uh, Pastor Justin Vicenda shared a really great story. We celebrated with our online ministry team this week. It was a woman who worships with us regularly on Facebook and two Sundays ago now you shared the message yep. about gathering. I met her Sunday. Yeah. You did meet her? I did. Oh man, that was just such a great She was story. fired up. Uh and you know, like she'd been to service, then she'd gone to a group. Mm-hmm. I saw her after like the group, she saw me again and uh she just could it was the same woman. She was yeah. like, I've been watching online, I've been watching online, I've been watching, I love it. But you got, she said to me, you got after me last week. Like I knew he's talking to me. I live five minutes away and I just, you know, she said, I, and I said, it's great. And and she said, it's so good to be here mm. with people in the room. And, uh, because it's, you know, that's just what fellowship looks like. So again, as we've said, 
so many times. There are so many good reasons for people to be online, and we're so grateful for the huge crowd we have. Again, we've gone through the reasons. They're out of state. They're shut in. They can't come. There Absolutely. is a sick up. Well, I understand. Uh, but, boy, th- what we hope about online, for many, for some people, it, it is the best they can do. But we hope for many others, it's kind of a front door mm-hmm. that you figure right. out, you learn it. And it's kind of like her. Figure out the church, learn. I listen. I realize, hey, that's, that's what I need. And then the next step is, hey, let's get connected mm-hmm. there. Absolutely. And uh, and so if you're not back in service, we'd love to see you at service. But, uh, yeah, we'll plug groups again. And I'll put in the show notes, it's calvary.us slash groups. You can go there. We got the Wednesday uh, back up and running. If you're if you're someone who weekends are tough, Wednesday night, there's groups that meet then. There's groups that meet during the week. Uh, it's just so important to get connected. I, I, it was a great conversation today, Pastor. Uh, but I, I just love that thought. You know, whatever you're going through, maybe you're in a spot, you're kind of down on yourself. It's so you don't have to do this stuff alone. It's so much. You were called. We're we're called to do it together. It's yeah. not even just like a you you need help or it's, it's you you're we supposed need to do this. Together. We all and even you think when you that little phrase you 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 know well I am who I think I am and and sometimes in our mind we're thinking of that person who's boastful and prideful and all that. Mm-hmm. But I think we hit on today that as often as not it's the opposite. Mm-hmm. I am who I think I am and. The devil has lied to us, yeah, and and he has lied to us about who we are, and 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 uh, uh, and it's negative. It's it's it uh, it puts us in bondage, and uh, it blinds us. And it's the truth of Jesus that liberates us. Hmm. You are who He says you are, and that is a liberating truth. That is not a confining truth. That's the kind of truth that will set you free. And you find that in community. When you're connecting with other people. Mm -hmm. So true. So we'll put that information in the show notes. Uh, but if you are having any sort of, uh, any, any issues running into that, I'll put my email address in there as well. So you can reach out to me. We would just love to help you get connected, uh, this, this fall season, uh, here at Calvary. So check that out. We'll put all that information in the show notes. Hey, thanks for spending a little bit of your day with us. Uh, it's always fun to do podcasts. We're so glad so many of you listen. Uh, big shouts out to Nick Grossibel for making this the best sounding. He helped us with our microphones today, ah, Pastor. I don't know if you yeah. noticed how good you sounded. Nick is our technical director uh, here around Calvary. And uh, he he's incredible. He's the ama- He's the best. We have he, Nick is incredible. This, I'll brag on him one more time because he's a big listener of the podcast. Whenever we do like a staff, you know, let's do some shouts out. It's almost like you got to do. Nick gets his own section. He gets <laughs> shouted out every single time. Yeah, his we team get. does an exceptional job, and very few people know how much they do around here. And so we're great. Oh man, there we joked recently. They just they're always here. Mm-hmm. You show up here for something. Nick and his team are here. They do live here. I think they it's do. An apartment. They got an apartment. <laughs> they do there. live here. Uh, shouts out to Nick. Thank you for your help. Thank you guys for listening. If you haven't already, leave a review or uh, or write a review or leave a rating wherever you listen to podcasts. That's uh, people ask for ways that they can help. That's the most helpful thing you can do uh, for the podcast. Uh, and we appreciate all of you that have done it. And we'll be back with another episode here very soon.